It's a sensitive, delicate deal, dragging brand new songs out of the sky. Trading ideas, accepting some, storing others in the maybe later bag, moving on and along with hardly a plan. During the Zep years, I never imagined a full-scale album project without the other guys, and even less the idea of new writing partners. But then, since 1981, I've enjoyed many amazing, exciting musicians in the sharing, in the writing, in production and engineering. Men and women who encouraged and enlightened, introducing me to crazy curves I could never have imagined. For this podcast, I'm going to be picking out some songs from here and there along the way, mixing constant shifts in sound and intention from across this long, old time. There's a story in all of them. I'm Robert Plant, and this is Digging Deep. Hello, and welcome to this, the final episode of this current season of the Digging Deep podcast with Robert Plant. And we have a fine, fine song to finish with. The song was originally written by Gene Clark of The Birds and first released by Gene with Doug Dillard on the Dylan and Clark album back in 1969. The version you're about to hear was recorded as Polly Come Home by Robert Plant and Alison Krauss and included on their classic Raising Sand album in 2007, produced, of course, by T-Bone Burnett. It's a moment of calm, dreamlike beauty on a brilliant album and seems like a fitting place to end the series. But there's quite a lot to cover before we say goodnight, not least the question of whether Robert and Alison have got any plans. Well, let's just leave Robert to explain. Polly Come Home is a track for this episode, this final episode in this season. Um, we've obviously talked about the stuff we've done with Alison before. Why this song then? Why is this song under scrutiny this week? Well, it's not so much... Scrutiny is a good word. <laughs> yeah. Why did he do that? But I mean, it's just the most difficult piece of music to sing. Okay. At the tempo that we sang it at. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's one of the toughest calls I have had, apart from the audition in the Yardbirds, to um, to actually go. The first crack at any vocal at all on Raising Sand was this song. Right. So, and it it's such a remarkable feel, and it's such a beautiful song. And you know, the guy's story is what it is, but the song itself is just it's so poignant. And it's so slow. So the very opening line of the song, in my chest, my lungs, my vocal cords, in my sense of timing, it was, how am I going to get these words right through to the end of that pecking bar without collapsing? It was just such a beautiful lilt. And the, the music that surrounded me in the headphones, in the in the vocal booth there was just, I mean, that was my first encounter with hearing what those guys could do. Yeah. Because when you're in the room walking around talking, taking photographs of guitar pedals, things like that you do, you know, that's that. But when the actual magic box opens up, you go, wow. And so this is the guy that sang Immigrant Song He's just going to go and sing this song here where I need an iron lung (laughs) to give me a little bit more air to get the song out. It's just such a great song, but the tempo, you know, and Jay's, the way he brings his the snare down on the two and the four on this song, it's just like, it was so languid. It was magnificent, but it was a hell of a challenge. And maybe it was the psych in me because... It was my first, I'd come all the way from the back of Bill's mother's to go to Nashville to walk into Sound Emporium to see, you know, all these guys and go, wow, geez, this is, this is not Ace of Spades. This, you know, <laughs> what am I going to do? But yeah, this is it. I think I'm really interested in this, the vocal performance, the idea that, that, that there's the, on one side, there's the kind of technical, there's the, I, I need to, it needs to fulfill this 
these tempo, these notes, this interplay. But if it has to be instinctive as well, it can't. Yeah. If it's too thought out, then you don't have a vocal performance. You no. have you have a vocal, a document, a yeah. vocal document of a song rather than a performance. Is there are there two parts in your brain? Can you how does it work when you do when you're approaching to sing something like this? How does it work? Well, there's no the thing is if I remember rightly, Nick, who's with us today, she and I were holed up in Nashville, and we went down to uh, it was a Sunday morning. We went down south to a little town, and the deal was we were to meet at Allison's house with T Bone around noon or something like lunchtime, and just sit around in the house, all acoustic, yeah. and sing. Well, that, it, to me, was like, what? <laughs> I want, where's my microphone with sort of some echo or ADT or some 90 millisecond slapback or, you know, I'm lost in those effects. So to sit there <laughs> with those people was such a, um, a remarkable new first time thing. Mm. So... I never really got the lope of any of the songs. We just decided what keys they were going to be in to suit both voices. Because you can't just sing. If it's an Alison song and you've got to sing a harmony, you've got to get ready for the her register. So you've got to be prepared to be up there somewhere angelic or whatever. And she likewise has got to become Hoagie Carmichael. Uh, you know. So I had no real run up to it just when they started playing and so it was so it just yeah. rolls out but it's the very first word of the of the first line if it's just that if the wild bird could jay it's <laughs> just like for god's sake hurry up <laughs> it's fantastic yeah. and that's why i love what i do remember we went we played um the new orleans heritage jazz and heritage festival um about 10 years ago with the band of joy perhaps less than that and that night buddy and patty were doing an npr guest thing with the uh preservation hall oh yeah yeah they're brilliant yeah, yeah they're awesome incredible so we do the gig and then we go to preservation hall in the the uh, French Quarter. And the dressing room is full of sausage rolls and a lot of very tired musicians in tuxedos. <laughs> and us, like, who've just come from, like, a, a festival on, on, you know, fantastic. So they're talking about what they're going to do. And, then, and they said, uh, well, you're here now. Why don't you do something? I said, OK, I'll do Nature Boy. So let's find the key. So we did the key. I think it's the key that Bobby Darren did it in or whatever or Nat King Cole. So it's time to get up. And obviously, I'm going to be kind of croon-esque. There was a boy. It, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing because I got this other resonance for the first time. Because it wasn't like doing a honey drippers cut with Armit. It was these guys who are there night after night. But they're also on the road now, by the way. Yeah. Um, and... Two amazing things happened. One, this guy who appeared to be asleep through most of the song, <laughs> who was sitting down, a clarinetist, who played with uh, Lionel Hampton back in the 50s, suddenly started playing. Oh, 
the solo from heaven. It was incredible. He was just, he got his eyes, he was just, he was digging the whole thing. <laughs> and if you've ever been to that gig, there's 80 people in the room and that's, it's full. And then out of nowhere, somebody who wasn't at the get together beforehand, who's part of the band came in and started playing a trumpet. Like, it was like something off Popeye or MASH. It was like, what's going on here? It was just so funny because one minute I was absolutely seduced by the sound of brass and the ease of it all mm. and then suddenly it was and then it went into paradise with the clarinet and then hell <laughs> came around the corner of this guy who just stood up with a cornet wah, wah, wah. and I went oh that's it so I went around the corner to get one mint julep <laughs> Was, but yeah, it's a tough, you've got to go with what you know you can do. Yeah. We've done another series. We've done another series. Have you enjoyed it again? Yeah, I... I don't think I'm losing my marbles, but there's things that I, as we elaborate, yeah, I, there's loads of tangential things that I think about in our conversation, which are magnificent. But they could, even all those shards could go on for a week. Yeah, it's quite something, isn't it? Yeah, that's why a book is taboo because once you've got a ghostwriter, somebody helping you with the perspective of it all, yeah, you're stuck with it, and it's never going to be really funny. Freeform conversation is is the way to go. And I think, um, yeah, and then it's gone, which is great. Exactly. The story... It's not going to be reduced for a pound somewhere. You know? Exactly. And it's it's not locked down. It's not, it's not tethered no. to the page. Stories get better sometimes. Yeah. You know? And excitement and adrenaline lifts the whole thing into another place. Yeah. You start being funny when it's not funny. So maybe there'll be another series. I hope so, yeah. Just um, It would be nice to have an accomplice. That's an interesting idea. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, guests. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody who can actually be in the saddle a bit more than I am. <laughs> I think you look good in the saddle. Mm. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, well, on that note, I think I better... I think that's I good. think I better tighten my jeans and run away. <laughs> That was Polly Come Home by Robert Plant and Alison Krauss from their 2007 album Raising Sand. And this is the end of the series. Thank you again for joining us on our expedition. I don't know if another artist has taken the time to sit down and talk through so much of their back catalogue for a podcast. I can't think of one. 
And we're doing it because, well, we're doing it because Robert came up with the idea and we're also doing it because we enjoy it. It's as simple as that, really. So we do hope you are liking these shows as well because we really enjoy making them. If you've picked up anything from the series, you'll know that Robert can't sit still for too long. So I'm sure he's got some plans. So head to robertplant.com or at robertplant on Twitter to find out more. Until next time, and I think there might be a next time, I've been Matt Everett. Thank you so much for listening. This has been a Cup and Nuzzle production. Music